Okay, next machine up is Magic City. It's a Williams machine. Uh, got this from a family who had it in their house for uh, at least 20 years. They said it doesn't work and it blows fuses, so we'll take a, a look inside before we turn it on and see what's in there. Okay, so I got a paper bag with the stuff from the insides of the machine, and boy, this is scary. Handful of blown 15 and 25 amp fuses, so something shorted out on a regular basis here. Uh, looks like they've got new fuses in there. I need to pull them out and make sure they're the right amperage, because the last thing I need is to have a 25 amp fuse and 15 amp circuit. Looks like I'll get to work on my first back box mechanics as well. These uh, aren't doing anything. It looks like the wheel's pretty frozen up, the gear inside, so I don't know if it's the springs or what. And uh, I think it's going to happen, well, some are better than others, but I've got some work to do back here and I've never done that, so that'll be interesting. Well, now's a good time to pull out one of the score reels. It's pretty easy. There's just like a pin here, like a, a clip pin. You pull it off, and then there's a wing nut that you loosen here, and then I've already done that, so then this whole thing just slides out, right? Now I want to go over the mechanics of this score reel. Okay, the mechanics of a score reel are pretty straightforward. You just, as the relay goes, it advances the reel, and you can see this thing is really slow. So I don't know if I've got weak springs or if I need to open that mechanism up and clean it up, but it goes very slowly and it's on four now. I'm going to get up to eight. All right, so here's eight. Now, pay attention to these two switches here. I'm going to turn it over. Let's see if I can get a good view here. Now, as I advance these, you're going to see when I go to nine... that arm moves and closes this switch. That's the 9 switch. Now when I go to 0, watch what happens on these switches. So watch right here as I hit uh, go back to 0. Notice the arm moves out and opens both switches. So that's important for the reset sequence on a pinball machine. When it gets to 9, it closes this one. When it gets to 0, it opens both of them. I checked the fuses and they're all the fuse sizes they've got in there are all more than are called for on the machine. Two 10 amp fuses have 15 amp fuses in them where we need a 15 amp. They've got a 25 and the bottom on the paper sign is gone. I'm guessing it's also a 15 and it's got a 15 in it so I'm hoping that one's right. I'm gonna have to research and find out what that those fuse sizes should be. Okay, first time I turned this thing on, nothing happened. It looked just dark like normal, and I hit the left flipper button, and I got lights on. And that was it. So I poked around a little bit and looked. The credit button wouldn't do anything for me. Then I went up and looked, and there were no credits on the credit reel. So I manually changed that. And then if I hit the credit button, it's going to turn the game fully on. Um, when I did that originally, the score motor kept running. So I went and manually set the score reels all to zero. Let's see what happens. All right, the machine has reset. Um, now I'm going to manually go through the play field and see if I can uh, figure out what may be causing the blown fuses. So I'm experimenting a little bit. I've got the score reels all set to zero. I can turn the machine on. It resets. I can start to go through the machine and I do see the score reels work. I'm going to hit a couple things here. I'm going to hit a pop bumper. That gives me a point, a very slow point. Uh, here's the center pop bumper. It works. 10 points works. Let's see what happens when I go to 100. And there's when I have trouble. All right, so I'm taking apart the first score reel. Got it at zero. I marked the score reel with the plastic underneath with a blue sharpie, so make sure I get the right alignment. Uh, although there were three Phillips screws here, a washer, and then a snap ring. Uh, so I've removed those. I'm going to take this off and see what's on inside there. All right, so I'm going to take this spring off. 
and then that'll let me take this arm out or move it out of the way and then I can push this out of the way and then I can push this lever out of the way and I should be able to get this plastic piece off and check it out. Okay, all I did was uh, really take this apart and clean it with alcohol and taking it apart is pretty straightforward. You take off this spring uh, and then this arm connects to the coil. So you take the spring off and then this arm, this plastic arm, connects to the coil and then it just slips out and you can move this arm out of the way and then this mechanism or this this um, spool, I guess you'd call it, comes off. It cleaned it all up with alcohol, put it back together. Let's check mechanical operation now anyway. Yeah, it's much smoother now. It's kind of sticking on the nine. I may experiment a little bit more but it's definitely better than it was. It's kind of tight right there in that nine. I've got a few problems here. One is I noticed I've got some broken wires here and I don't know it looks like they should connect to that solder lug right there. Two yellow wires it does. I need to look into that. That doesn't seem right. This uh, mechanism wasn't working quite as well as I wanted. It looks like the spring that was here, the blue spring, is weak. So I'm going to see if I can shorten it a bit and um, give it a little bit more tension. Then we'll see what happens. Here's that center spool with the, the ratcheted uh, plastic on it. On the bottom are two contacts. It travels on this little path. One of the contacts traces comes down to uh, lead labeled C and then the rest are 1 through 10. So I don't know if this is the match mechanism or something else. I need to buy a schematics for this one because it looks like I'm going to look at the other score reels. Maybe a couple of them have something similar. I need to find out what they are. Anyway, I'm going to reassemble this and see how I do. Okay, so here I am with this number one score reel. I actually had to shorten this spring. I think it was weak. I cut off about, I don't know, about four coils of the spring and bent the end on the right. And now it's really pretty smooth. It seems to be the spring is working just fine. Pulling that through the nine and the zero. Now I'm going to fix this broken wire over here. And then I noticed there are some broken wires on the other score reels. So this thing has got some work to it. All right, so I'm looking at these score reels, trying to figure out what the switch sequence should be. This is the 10s reel. This is the 1s reel. And the 1s reel is one I'm working in. So what I want to do is look at these switches. Right now, they're all open. There are three of them. If I, if I move from 0 to 1, that arm moved up, and it closed the bottom two switches here. Now, if I take a look at the same thing on the ones, the same thing in the ones, and I go from zero to one, watch what happens. Okay, they are moved up, but both switches are still open. So those switches both need to be adjusted to be closed. Okay, to adjust these switches, I moved it to the zero position so that the switches are as far down as possible. Take the switch adjustment tool put it in on the short arm close to the switch stack, give it a little bend, do the same thing on the second switch. So the idea is to get them close but not touching. And I'm in good shape, so now let's see what happens when I uh, activate the coil. Okay, they're both touching now, they're both closed, so that's the way it should work. All right, here's some detail on that broken wire. Uh, there are two yellow wires that were broken off from this solder blob, which is uh, tied to two switches. If you turn this over, you can see the uh, the other sides of the switches are red and blue wire. All right, well, a lot of work done in here. The one's score reel is great. It's clean. It's working great. I've got three more to go that are dirty and gummed up and not working. Some good news though, I'm going to move the camera. I turned this thing on and I was hitting on the playfield ones, tens, hundreds. 
I wasn't getting any action out of hundreds. Got to looking in some of these switches and they were just bent out of shape and as the re as the relay coils kicked in, the switches weren't acting right. So I adjusted I think four switches total on all these, turned the machine on, and now ones will carry over and uh, like when it goes from nine to zero it'll move the ten and tens do the hundreds. Thousands are so gummed up I'm gonna have to really work in the score reel. But progress. All right, I covered this earlier, but it, this is on the 100 to 900 score reel. It has a board in it as well. And I think hopefully you can see there's a trace around the, the center uh, spindle, which on the reverse side of the ratcheting uh, spindle, there are two contacts. This one always stays in the center, and then this one goes between all of the various numbers, and they are numbered 1 through 10. So it's a switch of some kind. I just don't understand why it's on the 100 to 900 wheel. I can understand on the match for the ones, not so much for the 100 to 900. So I had to order a schematic so I can see if I can figure out what that's all about. I want to talk a little bit about the match unit right now. I don't have a schematic for this machine and I've never worked on the match unit. So see what I can figure out with my own meter. I looked at score reel zero, or it's one through nine. And using my own meter, I hooked up on the number zero wire. Then I looked down on the match unit and changed my, went through with and touched each lead until I found where I make continuity. So there is the other end of the one through nine score reel zero wire. Then I went through and I figured, well, if this is the zero, I'm going to hook up to the zero match light and then I'm going to cycle through the match unit until I hear a beep. Oh, there's the chirp. Yeah. So there it is. So when this match unit's here, that's going to light the zero light. What I need to figure out is, okay, so then let's see. There I have a continuity all the way back to the zero score reel. So when that match unit ends there, it's a match on zero. So here's the match unit. It doesn't, it's one direction only. It just continues to step nonstop. There's no other uh, coil needed to reset it or anything like that. It just goes in a circle. And then if you look in the other side, then if you look in the other side, here are the contacts. And then as the match unit goes around, wherever it stops. Now what I need to figure out, and I don't have a schematic I need to learn, is what triggers the match unit, and then what are all these wires for? I could understand incoming one through zero through nine and outgoing lamp, but what are the other lights for? That's what I need to figure out. Here's the zero through nine score reel. I had some trouble after I cleaned it. It just wasn't uh, moving smoothly enough. Did some research on the web. A lot of pinball guys use super lube. It's a Teflon gel lube. So I uh, took the spindle off and I lubed up the post and even the surface of the circuit board with the a light, very light coating of super lube. It seemed to work. Now I, the other thing I noticed is I wasn't getting good contact between that center trace and the other traces. So I just hooked up an ohmmeter between the center trace and number one. Let's activate this thing and see what happens when I get to number one. So there's nine, zero, one. All right, so we should be good to go. All right, so here's the machine. I've got 2115 on the score reels right now after cleaning them. Simulated some points in the game. Turned it on and see how the reset works. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the thousands is not incrementing. You can hear the score motor running, uh, which we will do until that thousand hits zero. So looked in the back box, didn't see anything wrong with connectivity when I cleaned it. And what I noticed on the game is when it goes from 900 to 1000, the thousand reel works. So it's only a case of during the reset it's not working. I'm gonna take a look inside the machine at the reset relay, see what I can see there. I checked the reset relay and all the switch contacts seem to be uh, making contact. 
as I actuated the coil with an ohmmeter, they all went to zero, all the switch actual switches. So I came back and looked at the square reel and I see the black and orange wires here, which actually trigger this coil. And one of them feeds up into this switch. Uh, one of the switches from this, the, the lever from the square reel will actuate. Right now that switch is closed and I hooked up my ohmmeter and it's reading 136 ohms. Doesn't seem right to me, so I just uh, manually squeeze that switch together a little bit. Yeah, see there's the problem. I'm not getting good contact on this switch. So I'm gonna clean it up, see what if I can make it more permanent. All right, let's see if cleaning that switch got us going here. All right, so I just went on an odyssey on this uh, thousand point reel. The uh, it wasn't resetting at the start, so I had to actually trace the wire back, and uh, it was painful. Traced it back, uh, had to follow it all the way down through here, had to rip all the cat gut off as I went through. It came up into the ball count unit, and then it comes onto a trace in the ball count unit when it's in the ball zero position. If it is in the ball zero position, the other side of the spider takes this green wire down. The green wire goes down into the play field, comes out on the ball index relay. Now, the schematic doesn't say anything about that. It says it goes to the reset relay. So I don't know what the deal is, but went down and looked at the ball index relay. Sure enough, there was a switch that was uh, corroded, so it wasn't making any contact. Uh, cleaned it until the ohm meter said it was making contact. Let's see what happens. Okay, moment of truth. Clean that ball index switch. So I'm going to hit the... Uh, reset button on the machine. Let's see if that one clears. So, thousand point works. Even though the schematic says it should go through the reset relay on this machine at least, it doesn't. It wasn't some kind of hack job. It was all in the cat gut. So I don't know if the schematic's wrong or what. But it actually, the thousand goes down to the index relay. I'm going to have to see if I can figure out why. When I turn the machine on after it's been played, this is the ball count unit here, and I'm simulating this is fifth ball. So when I hit reset to start a new game, the machine just keeps hitting a reset sequence, and what I figured out is this is the reset coil. If I engage that, see how that ball count unit is not um, retracting all the way down to zero. So it's really gummed up. I'm thinking the springs are okay. It's just a case everything on this machine is gummed up. I'll see what happens once I clean it up. But what should happen is goes through five balls, game's over. When you reset, that should go back down. Well, I took the spider off of the ball count reel, and now I, I took the spring off and the cog spun freely. So I put it back on there, wound the spring back up three times. Now I'm just going to simulate going through five balls and a reset. Now watch uh, this cam right here as it goes back down to the switch. It's immediate. That's what was binding before. Now I haven't cleaned the cog or anything. It's working great like this. So I think my problem is on the spider side. I'm going to take a look over there next. So here's where I took the spider off and it's pretty dirty. I'm going to try cleaning it up with alcohol and then put a little bit of lube gel on there. Put the spider back on and see if it's clean. Here's the ball count unit after uh, cleaning the Bakelite circuit board or Bakelite board, whatever you want to call it, and the contacts, and then applying a little bit of Teflon gel lube. Let's see what happens right now. It's at ball position zero. I'm going to act like I'm going through the ball sequence, and then I'm going to reset. And then see how that goes right back down before it was going really slowly. So I think we're in good shape. Here's the next problem I've got. Uh, machine's on right now. This bank of relays, there's one for every letter on the play field and there are uh, nine, maybe 10 with the star. So what is happening is, as you run over a rollover of each letter, what's supposed to happen is each of these relays is supposed to engage. Only one of them is working right now. I think it's the C, the lower C, let's see here. There, you can see that relay just enabled so the 
here uh, are the final three relays. So that was C, this will be I, T, and Y. These are on the play field. So when I hit Y, you can hear the score indicator going, but the relay is not going. And as I visually check the difference between C, the only one that's working, and all the rest, it looks like the bottom two switches are not closed normally. So I'm just going to gently push on those to light them. And uh, yep, sure enough, I don't know if you can see it, there's a light right about here that when I close those two switches it lights up and that's the letter, uh, that's the insert or the letter Y. So now I'm going to hold those in place, I'm going to hit the Y on the play field and yes, the relay engages light goes out in the Y. That's the way it's supposed to work. So I'm going to go through on all of these except for that C and tweak those lower switches so that they all make contact normally closed. Alright, I bent all the lower banks of switches uh, up into place and amazingly I think every single light is working on this machine for these letters. So I'm just going to run through them and see if all the relays work. Looks like they all work. So at least now the letters work. Okay, I think I understand why the chimes don't work. If you take a look at this, here's the knocker coil. Works great. If you get enough points, it'll give you a game or a match. Here are the broken wires that should go to one of the two bell coils. And then here are the other two going to the big bell. You can see that's burned up, and also this plunger is frozen solid, so my guess is coil went bad, froze, and that's what was blowing the fuses. I will take this off, take this off, unplug this connector right here, let me see if I can adjust. This is just the connector for the wire to the knocker and the chimes, see what I can do. I've got two replacement coils on order. All right, here are the new coils in. Uh, the big bell and the small bells, and they work, so... Whew, loud when you're in here. So let's see if it works. Fire it up. Okay, let's see what happens. Here's 10 points. One point. So 100 point. And let's go, well, that's good enough, it's going to get noisy.